Remote access and client tunneling with OpenVPN and the Packet Squirrel, this time on Hack5. Hello, welcome to Hack5. My name is Garen Kitchen. My name is Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. And this little guy is... Brian. Brian. His name is Brian. Not like George the dinosaur. No, no. This is our, our newest member of the um, animal kingdom. Well, I do five. have. There's a penguin back here. Mm -hmm. There's uh, George the dinosaur. Somewhere. And then the been watching for Brian a while, the know. packet squirrel. Evil servers around here somewhere too. I want to get a slew of stuffed animal squirrels, and just pile them onto this table so that I have like a whole beautiful harem of squirrels. To, to what? To keep that your bear hug. back there company? That, yeah. I yeah. mean, well, yeah, that would work. I could put him with the bear. Okay. <laughs> if you would like to see a harem of squirrels on Hack 5, let us know. <laughs> um, I'm really excited because today it's not just the stuffed squirrel we're having fun with, it's the packet squirrel. And if Yay. you missed last week's episode, this is it basically. It's a Ethernet man in the middle, multi-tool guy. So, you know, packets go in, packets go out. What happens in between, up to you. Cool. Um, Easy peasy. So, simple. yeah, and then last week, we also covered all the basics of the Hack 5 gear, the packet squirrel, which is brand new. So Darren actually showed us how easy it is to capture packets and do a little bit of a DNS spoofing attack. But I have a question. What if I want to remote access into like my home network, for example, or if I'm a, on a client network uh, from a remote, remotely wanting to get into a client network as a freelance pen tester or as a, uh, a freelance sysadmin, is there a way to do that? Yes. Yes. Yes, because it has payloads built in. I'm really excited. Can I tell you how excited I am that we've got like built in payloads? Are you excited? I really am because <laughs> it's cool that we've been able to make awesome platforms it with like payload repositories or module repositories and people contribute to it. Totally. But the, like the fact that it's like out of the box, you never have to do anything, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically plug and play. Basically. So let me show you this first, uh, sorry, so we've covered the first two last right. week. Yeah. And let me show you the OpenVPN one. So okay. basically all we have to do is like configure this one file. Okay. It, it really couldn't be easier. So the first thing you do is you switch in, into arming mode. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to break this by flipping the switch <laughs> all the way to the right, and then you just SSH in. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that here, and I'll SSH to root at 172.16.32.1. Woohoo! Get cute little ASCII. And you'll notice uh, you can CD over to payloads, and you see that there's a switch one, two, and three. Hey, okay. hey, figure out what those do, right? <coughs> so if I switch, uh, CD to switch three, you'll see that I've got a payload.sh, that's the actual payload, okay. and a config.ovpn. So ah. that's it. You just you fill in the blanks. Your so, config so, OVPN. So what's running on the packet squirrel currently? It's it's just a client though, right? And we would actually technically we would need a server, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the idea. Is okay. rather than running an open VPN server on here and then you deploy it on the LAN and then you have to like open up ports on the firewall and yeah. stuff so that you can get in. That's never going to happen, especially if you're on a pen test, yeah. right? So rather, it's a client that will dial out to your VPN server up in the cloud. Got it. So if you're the client okay. and you, you get to our friend, our squirrel friend in the cloud. Yes, with the, with the towel hanging out of his butt. Totally. <laughs> That's what you've come to expect at Hack5. <laughs> expect no less. And I, anywhere in the world, say I like to go, say I head over to Bali, yeah. Indonesia. Yeah. If I can get over the internet to our squirrel in the cloud, yeah. uh, then I can communicate with your network. Hello. Yeah, so it's just so much easier to to Got punch it. out than it is to punch in, okay. as it were. So what do you do? Uh, so we do need a server. This? Ah, okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I actually spun up one right before the show. Mm. I use DigitalOcean because they've got these you know spiffy, easy droplets, but uh, <laughs> you could use whatever. I'm not endorsing okay. that particular VPN provider. I just right, or VPS yeah, yeah. provider, but I, I do like them for quick and easy servers. So it doesn't really matter which one you use, um, but. I know in the past we used OpenVPN AS. That's called the Access Server. That's the one with the really pretty web interface, and it's free for up to two clients, I believe. Is it still yeah, the same? Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Okay, it's clicky bunty as it were. But yes, it's, you know, to be honest, it's I, GUI friendly. It is. You know, I've actually moved on though. I've got to oh, say, really? it's nice. But uh, I've started just using the vanilla OpenVPN because oh. there's a setup script that makes it stupid simple. Like stupid simple. Watch this. Here, I'm just going to SSH over to my server, and in like two minutes, we're going to have a VPN server set up. Really? Yeah. So I've got this window over here. This is uh, another machine. 
Let me just go ahead and SSH over to this server that I just set up. And this is just running the latest Ubuntu TLS. And okay. literally all you do is wget okay. https colon slash slash git.io slash VPN TAC capital O to save it as a file to, I don't know, open vpn.sh or whatever you want. And then ampersand ampersand says, hey, when that successfully completes, go ahead and run, in this case, bash okay. space open vpn.sh. Literally one line of code. That's that's it. And it just went and downloaded that file off the internet and ran it. And now it's asking me a couple of questions. And literally all you do, you keep pressing enter. That's really it? That's it. Like, watch this. I'm just okay. So the first one, IP address, <laughs> already got it figured out. Yeah, that's the public IP address of it. Cool. Enter. <clears throat> Protocol already recommends UDP. Sounds good. Enter. Port sounds good. Um, current uh, DNS. Yeah, sure. Current DNS should be fine. What? Uh, what should we call the client? I mean, I guess I could write the word pa uh, packet squirrel in there, or I could just leave it named client. I'm yeah, only going to have matter. one client anyway, so fine. Okay. Client. Okay, that's all I needed. Hit enter. Oh, you know what? I lied. You have to hit enter six times. Oh, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't lie. It says press any key to continue. Look oh, at that. Oh, okay. There you go. So, <laughs> so technically, yeah. do you see the any key? Yeah, it's shift. Oh, okay. Wait, no. Control. No. Oh. Function. No. Alt. No. Caps lock. That's not the any key. Uh, print screen. No, that's not the any key. Pause break. Oh, man. He insert. doesn't have an any key. Ah, insert works. Insert works. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm actually just trolling. Oh, it wow. says press any key, but it means any key that's not a modifier key. Right, right, of course. Yes. Okay, so I actually used to think OpenVPN AS was easier than this. This is stupid simple, because wow. at this point you literally just sit here and wait, and it says, hey, we're generating all the DH or DV Hellman parameters, 2048 bit, long, safe, prime. Okay. Yeah, well, it says, <laughs> this is going to take a long time. It's actually not that long. And there we go. It's done. And it says, ha, ah, finished. Your client configuration is now available. Cool. There's my file. And okay. if I ls, if I lowercase ls, <laughs> there it is, client.ovpn. And really, if, if you want to add more users, you just, you know, you just bash ovpn, vpn.sh. You just okay. run that again, and it'll guide you through the same set of process to add more user accounts. That's so easy. OK, so Stupid now simple. you have this OpenVPN server up and running and a new user profile, which is great. You just copy it over to the packet scroll, right? That's it? That's basically the same That's thing you would do with your phone. I That's think, so easy. I think the most secure way for me to do this is just to SCP it from the packet squirrel from yeah. that server so the file gets over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so get this. So now from the perspective of my packet squirrel, uh, I will just SCP that file. So it'll be um, SCP, root is the user, I know, I know, at, and what's the IP address of this guy again? It's <laughs> if config. I'm really loving that name. Oh, my uh, VPS host name? Mm hmm. Yeah, you know me. All right. <laughs> SCP that, colon, and so this is going to say, OK, from the perspective of this user's home directory, which, as we know, if I ls tilde, it's, it's right there. So colon, client.ovpn, so that file. And where okay. do we want to put it? You know, I'm just going to put it here. Mm. So dot, which says right here where I am. Oh, that's easy. I have to just type in the password. And now, haha, -ha, it's there we are. I have client.ovpn. OK. Literally, all I need to do is now, let me remove config.ovpn and rename client.ovpn to config.ovpn. Mm. There we go. Okay. And if I cap that file now, haha, -ha, you can see this is beautifully set up for me. It's the entire configuration with all the keys and everything. You can see all of the, it's a client. Nice. It's going to use all these things. But it's, it's all done for you. Like, there's nothing. OK. It takes all the fun so out. we got it all set up, up and running now. What do we need to do to use this actual payload? OK. Well, now Here's that I've shown part. you all the hard parts, uh, get this. You have to unplug the power <gasps> from the packet squirrel. <gasps> you got to flip this. You don't this. have to press the button first or anything? No, no, okay, no. You, you good? just got to flip yeah. the switch over to from the fourth position to the third position. OK. I'm scared. That's the switch three payload. And then you plug the power back in. That's it? Yeah, I know. You got it. But, but <laughs> You got really? to you you do that. Because <laughs> it doesn't work if, okay. you don't, if you don't do that. All right. You just reboot it. 
Yeah. Cool. So, so <laughs> one way to say it is, have you tried turning it off, and, off and upside down again? <laughs> right? Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Um, basically, and so now you just plug it in line. I've got it plugged in line on my computer, but mm -hmm. this could be a printer or an IP it's camera a or a network attached squirrel, squirrel. stuffed animal. <laughs> it could be. We should have network attached stuffed animal squirrels. I agree. IoT with little lights that blink. So anyway. Uh, so it's done booting up and you can see that it's LED. Oh yes, it's yellow. Da, 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 da. Here, okay. let's see if I can get that on my cam. Yeah, you can see it's blinking Sweet. to let me know that it's running. Okay. Boom, we're done. That's nice. it. So if I go back to my computer, you'll see that this machine, which is connected to the internet through the packet squirrel, if I like say ping 8.8.8.8 or whatever, mm -hmm. it's online through the packet squirrel. Okay. And its traffic is uninterrupted. Wonderful. So I'm actually still on the same LAN I was before. It's not actually going to mess with any of the stuff. So if you like drop it on the printer or whatever have you, yeah. it's no worries there. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So at this point, I can actually now get a back door in because what this does is it remotes out to that VPN server. Okay. So now from the perspective of my VPN server, remember when I, here we go, I'll run that if config again. I'll SSH back in actually. And when I run if config, you'll see on the VPN server, I have this ton zero interface. And it gets an IP of 10.8.0.1 by default. And basically... So is that the packet squirrel? No, that's the IP address of the VPN server. The VPN server, okay. The packet squirrel gets an IP address from the VPN server. It just doles them out from DHCP. Ah, okay. And it's usually just the next one up. I can literally just guess. I, I could have, while I was in that config oh. file, set a static IP. But literally, every time I do this, I just increment it by <laughs> one. And it's always been that way. It always so, like, works. Yeah, so like if I, from the perspective of my SSH or my VPN server here in the cloud, FireNuts, if I do SSH root at 10.8.0.2, hey, there you go. Yes. Oh, nice. My packet squirrel's uh -huh. password. And you got Now the I'm on my packet squirrel. squirrel. How cool. Now, if you were trying to be like super thorough though, is there a way that you could double check that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I could put it, it static in the config file, okay. or I guess I could like enumerate the network from that machine, or I could probably okay. check out the DHCP leases from that. Okay. I don't remember where they're stored on an open VPN server, because I'm, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I always just go to dot we are two lazy. and it works. You know, well, you can't say that you're lazy because you're literally making what? these products. Okay. So you go so through that I can be more like lazy. years of work to make these things work, and then it makes you. But it gives you the ability to be lazy. Yes, <laughs> because that is the ethos of the sysadmin. <laughs> anything that can be done can be scripted, and anything that okay. can be scripted gives you more time to play Counter Strike. <laughs> All right. So tangent aside, um, what about the computer's network traffic? Isn't that going to go through the VPN as well, or no? No. So okay. in this case, actually, in this default state, now you know my computer here is still connected to the LAN through the packet squirrel, but yeah. it doesn't actually change any of my traffic. My traffic mm. from this computer isn't going through the VPN. Okay. It's just providing a backdoor for me, the pen tester, when I go up to yeah. the beach or whatever, and I can pull it up on my phone. But what if I want to do it the opposite way, where the, where the traffic from the computer is actually going through the VPN? Okay, for that. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that thing again. Oh we no! Unplug it, flip the switch back to arming mode, and plug it in again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's tough. It's tough, right? But I want to make this thing work. Me too. Actually, hey, you know what? While that reboots, I can show you a tip because mm -hmm. this thing had its internet connection through the packet squirrel, which I just rebooted. Yeah. So if I take a look at my SSH session, you notice it has just completely frozen. I'm hitting yeah. enter and nothing is happening. Hit tilde period. Oh. And it releases it. Oh. Which is the greatest thing because sometimes you're just like, what the, how do I? That's cool. I'm stuck. I have to open a new terminal. Like I used to be, and then I learned tilde period. It's the best <laughs> thing ever. All right, okay. so it's green. So it's green. So it's booted up. Let me SSH back in and show you how to set it up so that the client, this machine, will tunnel its internet traffic yeah. through the VPN. Okay. So from my machine, I'll just SSH back into the packet squirrel. Come on, buddy. Wake up. There we go. Just took it a second for its SSH server to wake up. And I'm gonna head over to payloads, and it's in switch three. And remember, just like before, but now, ah, oh, 
I have to edit a file, payload.sh. Right oh no. here, I know, I know, right here on line number five, it says four clients equals zero. Set to one to allow clients to use the VPN. Oh, oh okay. Oh, so you read the line above it. Yep. yep that's it. You I just... tend to RTFM. Well, if that takes all the fun out. No, it doesn't. That's why you comment okay. your code. No, that's why you get on the forums <laughs> and you post about the code you didn't read. No, post I'm joking. The <laughs> and then Without you can copy and paste the first, code and answer no, the that, question. That's literally it. You just save it and, and now the hard part again. Unplugging. Unplug it. Changing the, the switch. switch to the VPN. Plug it back in. Plug it back in. I'm a really fast learner here. I know. <laughs> oh, man. So now you actually have that like hardware VPN router. So if I stuck this on the back of my mom's computer, for example, she would be able to plug straight into it and automatically be on a VPN. Yeah. Gosh. And you just like, you know, siphon off some That's USB so cool. power from it, plug it into the Ethernet. We'll check it though, make sure. Okay, okay. So, um, one fun way that I like to find out is to just uh, check my IP. So, remember our virtual private server here, our FireNut server that we set up, <laughs> is 165.227.53.237. So, the idea here is now that the packet squirrel, which has just turned purple to let me know it's setting up the VPN and it it'll blink in hair. just a moment when it's done, uh, which is now done. It, <laughs> right, right, magenta. Um, You're such a dork. <laughs> now that's established that, that uh, VPN tunnel, yeah. everything going from this machine onwards mm -hmm. is going to be through that VPN. Right. So if I just pull up Firefox, whatever, not Firefox, I set this one up for a demo. If I pull up Chrome, Chrome, and I, for instance, Google, what is my IP? Hey, look at that. It is 165.227.53.237. Does Yay. that match my server? Yes, it does. So, there That's you go. That's so cool. That was pretty much That's it. That's great. That's way easier than like asking my mom to put a profile on her computer or on her on her smartphone and then having her load up a new app and all that. Just plug that thing in. Yeah. Do you see the matching port? Here's, you know what? Here's Find how the how matching port. Here's how she's going to mess it up. <laughs> she's going to plug her computer into this side and the network <laughs> into that side and we don't auto <laughs> negotiate that. No. I know. I know. So That's cool though. I could also take this to Japan with me. Because yeah. I'm traveling to Japan uh, this month, actually. Oh, right. Which, P.S., I'll probably do a meetup, so keep an eye on my social media for that. But that would be great to have one of those available at whatever Airbnb or hotel that I'm staying at. Mm -hmm. I did mm. something very similar, uh, not with this particular I payload, but I used a Wi-Fi pineapple when I went to Indonesia. Oh, no way. And you know, well, now that, that I think sense. about it, you yeah. can pretty much just port this exact payload over to the Wi-Fi <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> I guess you could. Uh, with a little bit of modification, that would work great. And then that right. would just relay a Wi-Fi signal instead of even doing it over Ethernet. I like it. So Cool. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm excited about this too. All right, so now I know we've just covered the basics of the three, well, I guess I could say four built-in payloads of the Packet Squirrel, but I'm sure that we're gonna see plenty more, just like the Bash Bunny, just like that. So if you are thinking about writing one, totally check out the Let's Code live stream that Sebastian and Darren did. I know y'all got into the nuts and bolts of the <laughs> scripting language. I see what you did there. I know, right? All right, yeah, it's in good, fact, right? um, that, is happening before this is aired, but I'm yes. assuming it was awesome and um, so it should we'll already do more be on YouTube because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so it should be on YouTube.com/hack5, and we'll put a link in the show notes to that so you can directly find it. As well as if I'm really feeling like getting into the groove of things on YouTube, you'll see a card right here that will pop up, and you can go directly to the video right there, right over there. Also, we have a contest going on, right? Yeah, I was, I was actually going to say, if you're watching this video from 2007 on YouTube, you can comment over here. You but mean that's not going to make any, no, 2007. Oh, 2007. <laughs> you can comment over there, oh, not down funny. here. That's funny. <laughs> that's very true. All right, so we have a contest going on as well. You can go over to hak5.org slash contest. We are giving away $100 gift cards for Hack5 gear now through November 20th. I've already seen some really, really good ones it's too on Instagram. Right? Yeah, so props to everybody who has been participating in that so far. Uh, later in the holidays, we'll do a whole roundup of all the winners too because these are so, so funny. I just love these submissions. Yes. They don't have 
have to be funny either. You can do really intriguing, really artistic. I want to see the stuff planted in the place that you can't tell me about. Anyway, Ooh. you know, lovely, of course. But yeah, Ooh. I'm really excited about all of that. Yeah, me too. Uh, just use hashtag Hack Five Gear. Okay, cool. Well, with that, man, there's so much other cool stuff mm. coming on. I mean, I know oh. that Hack Five.org got like a you know beautiful makeover yes. hack shop, beautiful makeover. Um, there's you're I'm, going to. I'm to going to Japan. Japan. You've yep. been blogging like crazy. There's I have been blogging reports. like crazy. Um, I'm actually doing this thing called my 30 day security challenge of November. It's going to be over on youtube.com slash tech thing. It's a 30 day straight of short format videos, a series to get you started in security uh, just for your personal life. So this is much more mainstream for consumers more than it is for infosec professionals. So if you watch that and you're like, why are you telling people to download a VPN app as opposed to creating your own VPN? That's why. Y'all already know how to do that. This is for everyone else. So this is something you can share with your family and friends who are just getting started into security, and then it'll get them started as far as being private and secure online for themselves. Yeah, get the basics down. Yeah, exactly. Get your basics down, then you can grow on top of those once you get the nitty, or once you understand the theory behind things. So that'll be on youtube.com slash tech thing. Security in a nutshell. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? The <laughs> breakdown on breaking in is on its way back uh, in November. Uh, Mubix is coming down to shoot another season of Metasploit Minute. We're really excited to have him. So stay tuned to that if you're not already subscribed, and you'll find it over at youtube.com slash hack5. So exciting. Which, I think that's it. OK, that's it. Well, until next time, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Brian, the packet squirrel. I'm Shannon Morse. <laughs> Trust your technolist. If you've got a great idea, you should do what Shannon and I do and head over to domain.com and register your domain. Bring it over to the internet using this super awesome discovery system that brings domains from your mind onto the web over at domain.com. They've got a quick and easy checkout process and they've been supporting Hack5 for years. You can also tweet at them at domain.com and say, hey, thanks for hooking up the guys and they've got a special treat just for you. You get to save 20% off at checkout over at domain.com using the super secret coupon code. It's HAK5. It spells Hack5 and it's just between you and I, all right? Don't tell anyone. Okay, you can tell people. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Remote access and client tunneling with Let's reverse that. And three, two. I actually need this. Ah! Sorry. You that killed him. Feels weird. Oh. I need, I, sorry, I need this. No. My poor Brian. CPR. It's not working. It's not working, Jim. He's dead, Jim. He's dead. No. These things happen. <laughs>